So Raven still got the presser going on right now as of this recording, um, but I heard all I needed to hear. And that is no disrespect to Harbaugh or Mark Andrews or Chuck Clark or whoever else, whoever else they have speak. But I heard all I needed to hear from today and somebody asked a hard hitting question. I think it was Jeff Zrebic, but they asked a question, Harbaugh. What's up with Lamar? Do you expect to get Lamar back? Is Lamar going to practice? What's happening with Lamar? And Harbaugh said, we do expect him to practice today. And it was like, oh, okay. But that wasn't it. He said it should be on a limited basis. So it's very important. And, and, and it's funny, I had to do another update because we just, when the Ravens announced all those people who got activated from the COVID list, uh, we, we made a video on that, and it was it ended up being Chris Trevler that ended up being the quarterback that they activated. And I saw a lot of people in the comment section, my guy, what's the B word? He was like, man, I'm going back to bed. And somebody else was like, man, I was anticipating uh, Tyler Huntley and Lamar, but then this was it. They're like, oh, man. <laughs> Boy, y'all ain't got no shame sometimes, man. But um, we should have figured something was up because – with the whole COVID list and with the Ravens, um, they don't never like, because cause they had Garrett Downing make a video yesterday. I hadn't even seen it until a little while ago, but they had Garrett Downing make a video yesterday about them possibly getting a quarterback back. And we should have figured, when we saw that, that should have been an indicator like, oh, okay, it's probably going to be Lamar. Reason I say that, because Ravens don't ever make no videos like that. Never. When do they make like an anticipatory video? I don't even know if anticipatory is even a word. But when do they make a video like that where it has you anticipating what quarterback is going to come back? They don't ever do nothing like that uh, unless it would be somebody with the real deal. So we should have figured. And then I remember Aditi Kinkabawa, the reporter who used to cover the Steelers a lot. She still does a little bit, but she's been heavy covering the Ravens for the last couple of years. Uh, but anyway... She had even said, she was like, oh, Ravens fans, I don't want to get you too excited, but I, she was like, call me crazy, but I would expect Lamar Jackson to come back this week in practice. And I was like, mm, I said, D, don't, don't get us started, because it was too early in the morning, whatever morning she wrote that. But I said, don't get, don't get us started. But this is, uh, is big news. It's very big news. Now. My concern was always been my concern. And a lot of y'all called it. Uh, so many of y'all called it too. Um, and I hope, I hope that y'all are wrong, the ones that said it. But so many of y'all said, with the Ravens situation being what the Ravens situation is, a lot of y'all were like, watch the Ravens rush him back. Watch the Ravens rush him back to where he's not even 100% yet. But the Ravens bring him back. Since they have the playoffs on the line, their, their, their playoff hopes are not done. And they are, they're alive. They need to win out, and they also need some help. They have some likely help, because the Dolphins, they got a tough schedule. Can they win nine in a row? Because they said, what, they lost seven in a row, then they won seven in a row. Can they actually win nine in a row, though, and win these last two? Anything's possible till it ain't possible no more. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and then you can get some help from the Bengals. You can get some help from the Steelers, Browns, blah, 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 blah. Anyway. Um, Ravens, they got a shot, but that shot, it starts this week with the Rams. Now we know how Josh Johnson did again, huge shout out to Josh Johnson. Loved how he played, loved it. Yeah. He made his mistakes here and there, but again, context is everything. This dude had one day of practice with the ones, just one, one day of practice with the ones. And he's only been here for, what, a week and a half, something like that. And the way he came in and just straight down the field and it, just the efficiency, the confidence. He didn't look shook, didn't look scared. None of that stuff. Loved how he played. But they know that with Josh Johnson, it's limited. Now with Tyler Huntley, and he could still come back. Oh, that, that, that would be so great. That would be so great. Because it's, it's possible that the Ravens this week in practice, and Tyler Huntley he can come back as early as tomorrow, but the Ravens in practice this week, they could get back both Lamar Jackson, who they'll get back today, and Tyler Huntley. So they would have all of their quarterbacks back. Now, expectations. We got to talk about expectations. 
Um, with Lamar Jackson, they said he'll be practicing on a limited basis, a limited basis. So that's not a full goal. That's not a full practice. It's possible that it starts limited and it gets ramped up throughout the week. It's also possible something to keep in mind. It's all, but you know, you know these Ravens, man. You just ah, we'll see. I, I just, I really hope that they don't rush him back. I really hope he's not rushed, and I, I, I really hope he's not rushed. Like I said in the last video, you find out that a lot of your uh, friends, your lot of Ravens fans, friends, that uh, you find out that how how much of medical experts they are when certain players get hurt. Whether they've been through it, they got the injury themselves before, or whether they know somebody that had it, or whether they know about the injury, they know what causes the injury, they know what makes the injury better, they know what makes the injury worse, they know all about the injury. But with Lamar, I just hope the Ravens don't rush him and end up making it worse. I hope they don't rush him for the short term and make the injury worse for the long term. You know, of course, Lamar wants to play. You know that. But... I'm sure that him, his mom, his agent, uh, I'm sure they, 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 they know. They, they understand what the situation is. They already know. I mean, he know he's going to get paid regardless, but still. Got to be smart. Got to be smart. Ravens on their end, too. Got to be smart. Got to. Do not risk your franchise quarterback for a couple of games. And I know the playoffs... I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, man, just tank. We're not going to do anything anyway, even though, like I said, I understand the people. I understand their reasoning, and a lot of people's reasoning is not even because the Ravens have such a depleted team. Their reasoning is because they want to see some significant changes made, and if the Ravens make the playoffs, then they know those changes will not be made. And even if the Ravens don't make the playoffs, a lot of us know those changes will not be made regardless. But anyway... <laughs> Don't don't ruin your franchise quarterback for a couple of games. We remember RG3, his rookie year. And I hate when people call Lamar RG3 because couldn't be further from the truth. But it's the example of RG3, his rookie year came in lightning, lightning hot, came in striking everything. He was on fire. I think he got rookie of the year, too. It's crazy. Him and Andrew Luck, they both. Yeah, they got drafted at one and two. Wow, that's wild. But anyway, RG3 came in hot. He was making all these plays. I remember watching his first game live against the Saints. And it was like, okay, let's go. Who is this guy? And um, But later on in the season against the Ravens, he got hurt against Lodinata. Lodinata is a nasty hit that he took, and his leg kind of just did a little parenthesis. And he was out for a little while. He was not ready to come back. He was still hurt. But the Redskins at the time, that was their name at the time, before they were the football team, whatever, they, season was on the line. It was playoff time. They said, oh, RG, come on, baby. Come on back, buddy. Come through, buddy. And he came through, changed the trajectory of his career. Changed everything. They rushed him back. He wasn't ready to be back yet. He wasn't ready. We've seen examples of it with Cam Newton. I know a lot of people like to call Lamar Cam Newton. Again, couldn't be further from the truth. It completely different type of quarterbacks. But Cam Newton, we know he hurt, I think, his uh, throwing shoulder or something. I forgot exactly what it was with the Panthers. The Panthers rushed him back. He wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. They rushed him back and they wonder why he wasn't performing so well and why he just looked off. He wasn't ready. You rushed him back. Changed everything. He ended up getting cut, went to the Patriots, and just it y'all know the rest of the story. And now he's he's back with the Panthers. And I was really that's that's what that's why I was so surprised that he went back to the Panthers. Because I'm like, man, they did him nasty, but he was like, oh, you know what? Let me let me collect this free check from them. It'll be like retroactive pay or something, or retribution or something. Anyway, um, and then you look at now with uh look look at Baker Mayfield. And and even though like I, I just a lot of times they just been hyping up this injury and the, the, oh if, if he's that injured, don't let him play. Don't let him play. But you see with Baker Mayfield, he got banged up, bruised up, battered up, all that stuff. They brought him back. Probably too early. Probably should have just rolled with Kingdom. But they brought him back and he just <laughs> he has been looking like a big yikes. But I know a lot of a lot of people will say he looked like a big yikes even when he's healthy. So that's a whole nother conversation. But my point when I say all that stuff is 
Don't rush your franchise quarterback back. Don't rush him back. Because the seasons are short. The seasons are very, very short. But these careers, they're long. And you just, I don't want them to risk it. So we'll see how he looks today. Uh, we'll, of course, hear about reports and stuff. Oh, Lamar is walking gingerly. Oh, he's not walking gingerly. Oh, Lamar has tape on his ankle. Oh, he doesn't have tape on his ankle. Oh, Lamar Jackson just put two fingers up. They practice in two-point conversions. So we'll see exactly what and hear about exactly how Lamar is looking. But I, I just want to make sure that everybody has realistic expectations for Lamar Jackson. Um, and right now, it's tough to say because... You, you, you want to say, like, with, with him just being back and this injury, he ain't practicing so long. You want to say you wouldn't expect him to play, but at the same time, if he's back and he's practicing, it's I just a scenario where the Ravens actually wouldn't play him. I just don't see it. But I'm, it, it does scare me. It really scares me. It scares me for the right here, right now, and it scares me for the future as well. Because you got to think about it. Now, uh because so, so much goes into this decision. And you got to weigh so many different factors. One of those factors, the play calling. We've seen a difference with Tyler Huntley. We've seen a difference with uh, Josh Johnson. We've seen with G. Rowe, he'll, how he'll call the easiest stuff for him. And there's been times when there had been some easier stuff called for Lamar, but he, he'll miss it sometimes. He won't take it. But there's a lot of times when everybody, they like, all right, Lamar. All right, we're going to send everybody deep. All right, Lamar, make something happen. Make something happen. And then you even see the, the formations. You see the personnel. That's one of the biggest things you see that is so frustrating, the personnels. Because you see with Josh Johnson, with Tyler Huntley, oh, you, you, you got Bateman out here. You got Devin DuVernay when he was healthy. You got Prochet. You got Hollywood. It's like, oh, okay, let's go. You got Mark Andrews, of course. Oh, yeah, let's go. But with Lamar, you have Mark Andrews. You have Hollywood. And, but then you'll have Patrick Ricard, you'll have Eric Tomlinson, you'll have Nick Boyd, and it's like, hold up. And they, they were even flexing Le'Veon Bell out there, and Devontae, and it's like, whoa, wait a minute now. Why don't we have our best weapons out there for Lamar? What the, like, and again, the, the whole the Patrick Ricard at wide receiver thing, that has got to stop. It's got to stop. It ain't nothing against Project Pat. We love Project Pat. Don't stop wasting a spot on the field for him at wide receiver. He's not a wide receiver. You have wide receivers. You don't have a short at wide receiver. Let him be a fullback. And because it's, it's just so crazy how you've seen the offenses, the, uh, the efficiency. And I know some people are like, oh, well, that's because that, that's Tyler Huntley and uh, Josh Johnson, they're pocket quarterbacks. That's why you see it like that. It's a lot deeper than that, my friends. And we know Lamar, he, he can be a pocket quarterback till he's shown that already. But he's also shown you so much more. And it seems like with Greg Roman, since he knows Lamar, shown him so much more. And Lamar can do so much crazy stuff that as we have seen, it doesn't mean every single play has to be crazy. And when a play ends up being Lamar crazy, let Lamar make that crazy play. Don't try to force it. QB draws, cut them out. Get rid of them. Eliminate those from the playbook ASAP. ASAP. The RPOs, I understand how the RPOs been down this year because there's not that chemistry. There's not that rapport that Lamar got with these running backs like he had with a JK, like he had with a Gus Edwards, like he even had with a Justice Hill. So understand that the RPOs are down. Okay, cool. I get that. But the, the design runs for the QB, especially given the injury situation right now, eliminate them all. Get rid of all of them. Every last one of them. Quick passes, man. Quick passes. If if Lamar plays, because it's like, again, I, I would say if, if he ain't fully ready to go, don't let him play. But I feel like the Ravens, I feel like this is just the beginning of them getting ready to let him play. You're going against Aaron Donald. <laughs> ah, and that Rams defense, that defensive line, they can hit, they can tackle, they can rush, they can do it all. Your offensive line is not the best. They're not. So, Greg, if Lamar's going to play this game... They have to call the similar play style like they've been calling these past couple of weeks. Short passing game, quick passes. Everything ain't got to be a deep pass for Lamar. It doesn't. And it's so important. And that's up to Lamar, too, to, to take what they give him. It's up to him to make those quick decisions. We know he can do it. We've seen it. 
And guess where we see him make the quickest and the best decisions? No huddle. No huddle. Up-tempo offense. But, hey, <laughs> they don't want to run up up-tempo offense. It's week, what is this, week 17? And it's, it's like, why, why does it, why does it, for, for so much stuff that we see as fans, and I know there's so many people that, oh, man, you guys are just armchair GMs. You guys don't know more than the coaching staff. Blah, 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 blah. But why is it that for so much stuff that we see as fans, that we talk about as fans all the time, it ends up happening way later, down the road in the season, way later. After we've been talking about it for so long, it ends up happening way later and it works. And it's like, we saw it. We saw the need for it. We saw the success of it. We saw that it could have a positive impact on this team. Why didn't coaches see it? And if coaches saw it, why didn't they do it? Why didn't they implement it? It's just, it's, it's so crazy. So many people always try to discount fans' perspective and, oh, no, that's why you're not a GM. That's why you're not in the league. That's why. Blah, blah, blah. But we say stuff. Not everything that we say is right. You know, sometimes we can go off the wall. And I love y'all questions from subscribers. Ooh, and this week is going to be another fun week of questions from sub. But anyway, we say a lot of stuff that just it makes sense. And it's not this super, like, rocket science stuff. It's like, oh, it doesn't have to be so complicated. No, it's simple fixes that we talk about and the Ravens they just oh they implement them way down the road and it's like y'all could have been doing this from a long time ago and had success Ravens cannot be stubborn upon Lamar's return they have to be willing to adjust they have to be willing to make changes please Y'all got to protect Lamar. Lamar got to protect himself as well. You can tell him throw the ball away. It's fine. And, but the quick passes will help the offensive line so much. It'll slow down the pass rush a lot. They need to call that same type of game. Like they've been calling. I mean, minus all the, the two-point conversion stuff. Because y'all know I don't, ain't done with that. But anyway, besides that, they, they got to help Lamar. Hardball. Lamar saves you. It's time for you to save him. We out.